Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael here, and welcome to another Fudge Muppet build. This week's installment is a Children of Adam worshipper called the Inquisitor. With an impressive damage output designed for stealth and ranged combat, this build is a glass cannon through and through. Seriously, after you've heard all the perks and the gear section especially, you'll realize just how high his damage is. Be sure to keep your distance, remain undetected, and avoid unnecessary and outright skirmishes. In keeping with the spirit of this build, you'll be utilizing very specific armor and perks dependent on low health and high irradiation levels as to maximize your potential damage. That being said, this seemingly cornered rat is not entirely helpless if discovered, as he also has a high base damage for confrontations, further enhanced with explosive bullets. As a disciple of Adam, the Inquisitor is a real sort of god religious fanatic type who will seek out heretics besmirching Adam's name, ultimately to destroy them. This plays into the Inquisitor's warped mentality regarding the dichotomy of right and wrong, pursuing what he perceives to be right even if it is on the contrary. It is of no surprise that the Inquisitor also firmly believes that the end justifies the means. Overall, this build has an incredible, powerful, and unique playstyle that relies heavily on you, the player, to remain highly stealth-oriented, choosing your battles, biding your time, and striking with surgical precision for maximum results. That said, when this build is maxed out and leveled up heaps, you can just run around and kill everything without sneak, although it is more dangerous, of course. Now, before we go any further, we'd like to announce that from this point onwards, we'll be releasing Fallout 4 builds every second week instead of every single week. Scott and I are looking to get a lot more personal with you guys, so be on the lookout for new content in the future. We've actually got a whole channel update about what's coming on the channel, all about this kind of stuff, so be sure to click the annotation on screen for more info on Fudge. Also, check the description for our Snapchat and Twitter if you're interested in a few giggles, nudes, pet hamsters named Gerald, and other behind-the-scenes goodies, in that order. Now let's get into the build, The Inquisitor. Backstory time. Oh, and don't forget the timestamps in the description to help you navigate throughout this video. Raised in a salt to the earth Christian family, the Inquisitor had always been an impressionable individual, looking to invest himself towards a cause. Naturally, the Christian faith became a major part of his life, if not his entire life. Initially, his faith manifested into harmless and positive personality traits, such as unwavering kindness, widespread generosity, and gravitating towards his family. As a child, the Inquisitor was both academically gifted, showing signs of an eidetic memory, as well as being athletically gifted. It was in school that his faith was tested by exposure to the sciences, which challenged much of the Bible. At this point in his life, he had yet to become radically devout and thus accepted both science and religion. As he grew older, his superior intellect became increasingly apparent by his almost unnatural ability to consume knowledge. Much like Ty Lopez, knowledge became something he sought after, reading text after text after text. To challenge himself, the Inquisitor read various versions of the Bible in multiple tongues as a means of becoming closer to the Word of God. His gifts were seen by his family as him being selected for the holy path. The Inquisitor himself convinced that he was being guided by the Lord. In actuality, he was just an accumulation of excellent genetics. Reaching adulthood, the Inquisitor struggled to associate with those who were not of a similar faith. While he would attempt to make some social connection to the non-religious, it was difficult for him not to perceive their lifestyle as greatly immoral. Like every Fallout 4 male build, the Inquisitor enlisted for military service after high school in order to fight for his country, defend a nation he'd been told his entire life was a place created by God himself, and he also wanted to protect the Christian way of life, which he believed was so integral to society. During his service, he excelled as a soldier in all ways, once again convinced it was attributed to the Lord's favor, when in reality, like every after-school special, it was inside him all along. The Inquisitor returns a war hero, marries his high school sweetheart, and they have a child nine months after their honeymoon. When the bombs begin to fall, the Inquisitor is rushed into the vault, and we all know how it goes from here. Upon exiting the vault, the Inquisitor feels as though his once picture-perfect life has been derailed. With a deceased wife, a missing child, and forsaken to walk a barren hell wasteland by a once-beloved deity, he interprets the events as a betrayal by God. Like many of the previous builds, the Inquisitor is forced to redefine his reality in his new landscape, however, he will feel like his reality has been completely shattered. Why would the Lord test him? He'd lived his entire life according to his will. It's at this point in the story where he questions the very basis of his faith and decides to accept all the help he can get. 
The Inquisitor will take advantage of the many factions for his own benefit, discarding them when they've served their purpose, and doing whatever he can within his means to find his son. For the most part of the early game, he is nothing more than a broken man wandering the land in an attempt to salvage the remains of his former life without religion. Eventually, he decides to begin the Far Harbor DLC, and you can start this at any time before finishing the main storyline. When he arrives in Far Harbor, he encounters the children of Adam, and suddenly his faith is revived. In the back of his mind, he had preserved hope by remembering the trials and tribulations of Job. This revelation is not without its metamorphosis, however. The God he knew, the one that had given him so much and all that he'd valued, was dead. Christianity did not understand the true ways of the world. From the ashes of a false cult rose the proper manifestation of divinity, Adam and his children. It is through Adam that the Inquisitor comes to believe there are infinite universes within him and thinks that the destruction of his past world served a beautiful and useful purpose. Over time, he becomes completely indoctrinated by the children of Adam, at one with yet another faith. His intellect and physical abilities will allow him to rise through their ranks and become the build you see before you today. The Inquisitor will forever serve their interests and in turn, Atom. When he ventures back to the Commonwealth, he's faced with the choice of either the Minutemen or the Institute, as these are the most useful to his cause. The Institute would grant him ample resources and leverage to aid the children of Adam in secrecy, however siding with the Minutemen will grant you the opportunity to spread the faith of Adam and convert all would-be non-believers. You can establish settlements all around the wasteland with artifacts and decorations related to the Children of Adam aesthetic, essentially forming temples of worship. These decorations were added in the Far Harbor DLC. You can even dress your settlers in Children of Adam gear to add to the immersion of the scenario. As for you super enthusiastic roleplays, why not both? Install yourself as the head of the Institute and form settlements. Go for gold, Scientologists. I mean, Children of Adam. While the Inquisitor is known to get blood on his hands from time to time, his killings are not without a purpose. He will exclusively target high-profile heretics who disgrace the image and word of Adam. Keep in mind when we say high-profile heretics, that is completely up to him, aka you, to decide. So have fun with it. It's worth adding that he doesn't kill everyone lacking in faith, as he believes these basic citizens can be converted further increasing the strength of the religion in numbers. It goes without saying that everything the Inquisitor does is for the will of Atom, even if the will of Atom is nothing more than delusions and misinterpretations within his own head. With the start game special stats, you'll want to have one strength, one perception, one endurance, three charisma, ten intelligence, ten agility, and two luck. The special book in Sanctuary will be used on luck to bring it up to a three. Ten Intelligence will help the Inquisitor level up insanely quick, and this becomes so much more insane in terms of speed later on with the help of the specialized gear we've selected along with our playstyle. We'll detail how we are using a highly irradiated character to be more powerful in the gear section. Ten Agility will enhance the build's stealth and grant access to extremely useful perks as well as giving us a ton of action points. As stated from the beginning, while this character is extremely capable, he's in fact somewhat fragile in a lot of the game stages and will need to kill quickly and decisively. Thankfully, his damage will be high enough to compensate for this minor shortcoming, as you will find out later. Luck will increase the frequency of those nasty critical hits and allows you to implement them almost seamlessly into the playstyle of the build, more so as this is increased in the later stages of the game. With that out of the way, let's build this build. We'll go over all the perk choices up to level 50, and remember that this does include some of the new perk ranks. Not the shit ones, of course. As always, if you want to shift things around, you can, and I also want to mention that even though we're using an explosive damage rifle, we're not getting Demolition Expert. It simply isn't worth the investment, as our damage multipliers will be ridiculously high due to our other perk and storyline choices. Also, do tune into the gear section to learn how we capitalize on damage multipliers in a very extreme way. So looking at the start of the game, this character is going to begin his crazy adventure by getting the Lone Wanderer perk. This perk grants him 15% damage resistance and 50 more points of carry weight while traveling alone. Obviously, this is a great counter for a character with low endurance and low strength. 
Following this, we play to the strengths of this build and pick up the Action Boy perk. This will make your action points regen 25% faster, and this will give you even more VATS usage at the start of the game on top of your already high agility. This will help you with not dying as you can react quickly to threats by slowing them right down in VATS. At level 4 and 5, we're getting two ranks of sneak in a row, chosen of course to help this build with its stealth playstyle, and after two ranks of this, you'll be 30% harder to detect, and you'll no longer trigger floor-based traps. After this, the Inquisitor gets his Shinobi on with the Ninja perk, and while this increases melee damage as well as range damage from sneak attacks, we'll just be discussing the range damage. Obviously, you could carry Adam's Judgment as a relic from Adam, however, it won't really be used much. So at rank 1, Ninja will make ranged sneak attacks do 2.5 times as much normal damage. This multiplier is obviously a lot more advantageous than investing in Commando. However, after picking Ninja, we will then invest in Commando, as it's the next best thing for the Inquisitor. At rank 1, Automatic Rifles will do 20% more damage. At level 8, this build gets Gun Nut to start customizing his automatic guns, and until you get the Kiloton Rifle, Gun Nut is more important than science. Weirdly enough, you'll need plenty of the science perk to get the best out of our endgame gun choice. At level 9 and 10, the Inquisitor will start rounding up some ammo with two ranks of Scrounger. This will make him find more ammunition around the wasteland, and it's definitely important for most characters using automatics. Also, while it may be thought by some that an automatic rifle character with explosive rounds isn't the best for stealth, it turns out that the theory is very different from the reality. This build works perfectly with explosive rounds, in fact, I prefer it a lot more for the character. At level 11, the Inquisitor will be picking up the second rank of Commando to cause 40% more automatic rifle damage and also have improved hipfire accuracy. This can be useful if you unexpectedly become compromised at short range and quickly need to blast off some fast shots. That said, VATS is probably the best option for that situation. Next up is the third rank of Sneak, meaning that you'll no longer trigger mines and you'll be 40% harder to detect. Finally, at level 13, this build will get access to Suppressors, making his sneak playstyle even more viable. This is because we're choosing the second rank of Gun Nut. This will then allow us to get the Mr. Sandman perk at the next level. At rank 1, it causes Silence Weapons to do an additional 15% sneak attack damage, and it will also give the Inquisitor the ability to instantly kill a sleeping person. This uses a unique throat slicing animation and is reserved for the worst of the worst. At level 15, this build collects a point of luck, and at level 16, he gets the second rank of Ninja. At this rank, ranged sneak attacks will do three times as much normal damage. After this is Lone Wanderer 2, and like all the Lone Wanderer perk ranks, it's pretty damn good. It's going to give you 30% damage reduction and 100 more points of carry weight while traveling alone. Again, this is beast insurance for a low endurance build, even if you're not meant to be hit. At level 18, we enhance our VATS capabilities drastically with the second rank of Action Boy, increasing action point refresh speed by 50%. This is followed by Mr. Sandman 2, which increases the damage of this character even more. Silence Weapons will do an additional 30% sneak attack damage now to be precise. Finally, at level 20, we get another point of luck, and the reason we do this is because we're getting great luck perks later on, including a new luck perk rank added by the Far Harbor DLC. At level 21, the Inquisitor will be causing 60% more automatic rifle damage, and have his hipfire accuracy improved even more with Commando 3. After this, we're putting a perk point into science to start building it up for when we modify the Kiloton Rifle. Next, we get the 4th rank of Sneak, and now running will no longer adversely affect stealth. This is very powerful, making this character a fast and concealed hard hitter. It also makes you 50% harder to detect while sneaking. After this, we build up the Science perk again, taking it to the next rank, and then at level 25, the gun customization continues with Gun Nut 3. This will allow you to cause even more damage more accurately with your weapon, and will be followed by the Scrounger perk to again help you ensure you never run out of bullets. We then get a rank of luck to work towards luck perks, and then we get Science 3. You may very well have the Kiloton Rifle by now, in which case you'll be finding Gun Nut and Science very, very handy to have. Following this, the Inquisitor will finally start delving into those luck perks with the amazing Critical Banker perk. To get this, you will need the bobblehead, and at this point in the game, it's definitely a possibility to get. Remember, we have guides in the description on how to get everything you could possibly need. Critical Banker will let you store an additional critical hit for when you need it most. 
At level 30, this build collects the final rank of Mr. Sandman, making silenced weapons do an additional massive 50% sneak attack damage. Next up on the list is the second rank of Critical Banker. Now you can store up yet another critical hit. By using this perk, the Inquisitor will be able to use critical hits to take out long range targets as critical hits do not miss. He'll also be able to take out multiple people in the one area without missing, especially after this perk advances even further. Basically, it will allow you to succeed no matter who you encounter, and it's extremely powerful for a high damage, low health build such as this. At level 32, we get another great luck perk known as Better Criticals. Starting off, it will make the critical hits of this build do 50% more damage. After this, Ninja comes to an end with rank 3. Now our ranged sneak attacks will do 3.5 times as much normal damage, making Ninja one of the most powerful multipliers we've got. At level 34, we'll do another rank of better criticals, making our crits do twice as much damage, and at level 35, we're getting Commando rank 4. Commando 4 will make automatic rifles do 80% more damage, and also gives their bullets a chance to stagger opponents. This is sensational for this build, especially seeing as he needs to kill his foes as fast as he can without letting them attack him. Another luck perk, Bloody Mess, is chosen after this. At rank 1, you'll simply do 5% more damage on top of all your other damage, and you'll have a chance of your enemies exploding into a gory paste when you kill them. Following that, we get the final rank of Scrounger, and this one gives you a chance to save ammo when firing the last round in your clip. At level 38, the Inquisitor gets one of the best perk ranks that Far Harbor added, and that is Action Boy 3. At this rank, you'll get 75% faster action point regen, meaning that you'll be able to sprint around and use VAT's attacks all the time. Soon after this, you'll be level 39, and engaging stealth will cause distant enemies to lose track of you. This is because we're getting Sneak 5, which can definitely come in handy if you make a huge mistake and are compromised in a really dangerous way. Finally, at level 40, we get Lone Wanderer 3, making the Inquisitor do 25% more damage when adventuring without a companion. This stacks on top of all our other damage multipliers to truly make this build overpowered. But you will of course need to listen closely to the gear section to truly grasp what else is at play here. In the final stretch of perks, the Inquisitor will be picking up the final rank of science, meaning that he'll be able to customize the Kiloton Rifle to be as good as it can, which is pretty good, I must say. He then gets better Criticals 3 so that all his crits do 2.5 times as much damage, and then he'll get Critical Banker 3 so he can store yet another critical hit before he picks up two ranks of Bloody Mess over levels 44 and 45. Now this build will be able to dish out 15% more damage against anything with everything. Following this is a bit of a fun perk, but you'd be surprised how much it can actually help this build in the right circumstance. It's the Quick Hands perk, and at rank 1, the only rank we're getting, all guns will reload faster. This means that in a big scary confrontation, the speed at which you can blow everyone to pieces is that extra bit faster. We're then going to be getting a bit of a wacky perk rank, Bloody Mess 4. This means that after you make an enemy explode, which will be very often, nearby enemies may also suffer the same fate. We're then going to save a perk point at level 48 because we need to choose two perks at level 50. At level 49 we get Commando 5, now causing automatic rifles to do double damage and have an even greater chance to stagger opponents. Also remember that you'll cause even more stagger on top of this because your main gun does explosive damage. At last we arrive at level 50 and here we get to pick two new perk ranks added in Far Harbor, Critical Banker 4 and Lone Wanderer 4. Lone Wanderer 4 will give you 25 more action points when you travel without a companion, and while at first that doesn't sound like heaps, it definitely helps you out in VATS, trust me. Critical Banker 4, as many of you would guess, allows you to store another critical hit. Including your critical meter, this means you could have up to 5 critical hits to unleash all at once, if you so choose. The endgame special stats for the Inquisitor, not including gear but counting bobbleheads, are as follows. 2 Strength, 2 Perception, 2 Endurance, 4 Charisma, 11 Intelligence, 11 Agility, and 8 Luck. I want to stress again, this does not include gear, but do listen to the gear section because it adds a lot. At the start of the game, feel free to equip whatever you like until you most likely acquire something like combat armor. You can wear miscellaneous hoods for a priest vibe, but it's of no great importance as you'll want to wait for the Far Harbor gear. We at Fudge Muppet suggest to go for the most badass option until our prescribed options are available. In terms of guns, the best choice would be Spray and Pray if you can afford it, until of course you can get your hands on the Kiloton Rifle. Similar to what we've mentioned about apparel, before Spray and Pray, just equip the best automatic rifle available until you can buy it. 
As a tip, we also highly recommend silenced firearms. You want to use your gun nut perk to build suppressors for all your guns. Guides for the Far Harbor gear are linked in the description if you so happen to find a need for it. As for the final gear, it is as follows. This build will primarily be using the Kiloton Rifle, a unique radium rifle that deals explosive damage. You'll want to customize it to be silenced and pile on the modifications for even more damage. In terms of your armor, you'll want to equip Adam's Bulwark, which is a chest piece which increases both damage and energy resistance the more radiation you have. This is part of the defining logic behind why this build will possess such small amounts of health and large amounts of radiation. You'll then want to get your hands on the Inquisitor's Cow as your headpiece, which increases your intelligence with, yeah, you guessed it, radiation. The maximum amount of intelligence the cow can give you is 4. Fear not though, as this limitation of the cow will still cause the build to level at ridiculous speeds. We'll be wearing marine armor when we come across it, which is definitely the strongest in the game, and you'll also want this to be made Zealot or Inquisitor. Whatever you'll be able to scavenge or afford, as long as it blends in with the Child of Adam aesthetic, as we as Fudge Muppet are obviously all about the aesthetics. You'll want to equip the legendary marine armor known as Recon Marine Armor for your arm pieces. The left arm has the ability to slow time when you hit low HP, and for those of you seeking a riskier playstyle, you may voluntarily trigger this when entering combat situations by sitting on a really, really low HP level along with a whole heap of radiation. The right arm will enhance the effectiveness of this by granting you a bonus 10% movement speed. Once you finish siding with the Child of Adam and the entirety of the Far Harbor DLC, you'll receive a perk that allows you to deal even more damage the more irradiated you are. With a bonus of around 30% damage while highly irradiated, this is quite the added boost. The unique consumable Fire Belly will also be a combat possibility, as this further increases damage the lower your health. We obviously don't know the definition of overkill, as to top off the icing of this bonus damage cake, Close your eyes and imagine this entire arrangement alongside the sneak attack multipliers. In the end, if you've followed our instructions to the T, you should pretty much be able to insta-kill anything and everything in sight under the right circumstances. Finally, be sure to carry stim packs and right away in the event you have a need for them, which as everyone will know by now, you eventually will. No companions are required for this build, as it conflicts with stealth and the Lone Wanderer perk. Settlements for this character are not a priority, but as mentioned before, you can decorate them to make a kingdom which fits the aesthetic and spirit of the Children of Adam. And that wraps up this week's Fallout for Children of Adam build The Inquisitor. For more balls to the walls builds like this, throw us a like to praise Adam once and do spread the word of Adam. Also, come visit us on social media to confess your sins or, you know, regular conversation. As always, I'm Michael, and I'll see you next time.